something exciting has happened. I have reached 150 subscribers on my YouTube channel and you know what that means. It is time for another reading challenge. I have challenged myself starting today, which is a Tuesday, to read 150 pages a day for a whole week in honor of all of you lovely people for being here. Thank you. The last time I did this challenge, I enacted a rule midway through. So I'm enacting the rule at the start because I know that it will apply. I'm reading 150 pages a day for seven days. I am allowed to take pages from one day and move them to another day. So really I should call this, I read 1,050 pages in seven days because that's the actual challenge, but it's catchier to do it, 150, you know what I, yeah, like you get what I'm saying. Let's talk books. As you may or may not know, I'm reading The River of Silver right now, which is the Deva Bod collection of short stories from Miss S.A. Chakraborty herself. I've tabbed it a lot. This might not make sense, but all of these tabs at the top are the different stories. I did my math and it looks like there's five more stories to read. So I'm gonna finish this this week. I'm gonna read one story a day for the duration of the week in order to make it last because I love this book a lot and I don't wanna play through it. Like it's not that type of book. It's a high fantasy story and we're exploring a lot of perspectives that we didn't get in the original trilogy and it's just like so good and I'm savoring it and I'm letting it break my heart. I haven't cried yet, but I, oh, I almost did. On my lunch break today, actually I'll show you the footage for that. On my lunch break today, I was reading it and I almost started crying because there's a specific scene. Orange fields, orange groves, if you know, you know. In other news, I finished the audiobook for The Clockwork Prince. I had the equivalent in audiobook percentage less than 30 pages to finish today. So I finished a lot of this yesterday and I was really just like wrapping up the last little chapter. And boy oh boy, if you've read this, Tessa has gotten herself in a predicament and this is not a war or politic or shadow hunter predicament, this is a love predicament. I didn't add the Clockwork Princess to my July TBR, but like it might have to go on there. While I finished that on my drive into work, afterwards I picked up another audiobook, Cross Her Heart by Sarah Pinborough which is, if you do not know, a thriller author that I love very much. I've read Insomnia and Behind Her Eyes by this author and am diving into her backlist. So far we follow two characters, Lisa and Ava, and actually there's a third one, but we haven't seen very much of her, so I'm only 25% of the way into the audiobook. Well, we'll negate that for now. We'll probably get back to her. They, she wouldn't have a perspective if she wasn't important. I know that. So Lisa is the mom. She's a single mom and Ava is her daughter. She's 16. Ava is talking to a grown adult man who is grooming her, obviously, through Facebook, but seeing her perspective, um, she obviously doesn't see it that way. He, like, understands her, and he knows I'm not a child like my mom does, and it's just, like, disgusting. So there's that. And Lisa is a very overprotective woman and mother, and she is a career-oriented woman, um, but she does have a lot of anxiety around her career as well, and overall just paranoid. You're definitely getting hints that something has happened to her. There's a child that she had that died when he was very, very young. There's no, like, circumstances that have been outlined or no, like, accuser, but she's definitely the victim of something that had happened a couple of years ago. She'll hear songs on the radio or see a stuffed animal and she just like something flips in her mind and it's like panic mode where the external situation doesn't equate that reaction. So that's been hard to read but one of the things that I just love about Sarah Pinsborough's writing is it's so fast and distinct. Like even if I miss in the audiobook Ava and then we're starting Ava's chapters, you can just tell from the writing that this character is much younger, much more immature. So those are the things I'm reading right now. I don't know how many pages yet I have read today, but I will check in with you before the day is up to give you my total. We're about to watch the season finale of Stranger Things. What are your thoughts? Feelings? Are you scared? Yeah. <laughs> can you believe it's two and a half hours long? <laughs> Uh, wasn't expecting it, but I'm hyped for it. It was like, it's actually 7.45 at night, and the fact that this isn't going to be over until 10 is really annoying. It's perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay, we just finished watching the final episode of Stranger Things Season 4. You know when you're, like, watching a TV show and an emotional moment happens, and, like, a single tear falls? I sobbed twice 
during two specific scenes that if you have seen Stranger Things, I'm sure you could guess which two they were. Um, but like actually like my bre I'm breathing and sobbing and crying. In other news, I totaled all the pages that I read today, audiobook and reading wise, and I'm at 143 pages. So I'm seven pages shy for my 150 goal and I'm going to hop in bed and read seven pages of a book. I'm gonna brush my teeth, get ready for bed, and then I'll check back with you in the morning. Good morning, it is Thursday morning. I didn't do any vlogging yesterday, but I did want to let you know that on Wednesday, I also completed 150 pages. I read another short story in The River of Silver, and then I majority listened to audiobook pages for Cross Her Heart by Sarah Pinborough. I am closing in on 70% of the way through with this audiobook, and there have been some reveals that have happened that I did not expect. So Ava, the daughter, has been kidnapped and she had been talking to this guy online, like I mentioned, and she went to go meet him. Nobody really knew about it. However, while all that is happening, Lisa has something come out about her that affects her entire life and she's been hiding this piece of her past, but it comes out when someone recognizes her in like a newspaper story. Now she's fielding a bunch of things she's got cops on her like i yeah it's been insane everyone is trying to find ava and lisa is thinking one thing happened and the cops are thinking a completely different thing happened um so basically it's essentially chaos right now big trigger warning for domestic abuse emotional abuse sexual abuse um this book is really dark and holy wow I listened to a lot of audiobook yesterday because um, yesterday I went to my community group so I knew I wasn't going to have any time to read in the evening and essentially that's kind of what's happening tonight. So yeah, I'm going to be listening to a lot of this audiobook. I might finish it and I'll let you know my thoughts when I do. It's Thursday night. I read 150 pages. I finished Cross Her Heart and it was pretty mediocre. It was interesting and it just like wasn't anything past that like I'm never gonna think about that book again like it really wasn't anything that was like very notable I'm not I like already like half forgot like how it ended. <laughs> what I have loved about Sarah Pinborough in the past is this almost like speculative angle that she takes at the end of her books and it just brings it to a different level of like otherworldly existentialists that I really enjoy and this book did not deliver on that. It was a very simple basic thriller mystery. It wasn't even like super suspenseful. I will say though that she does a great job of changing up her POVs and keeping you on your toes with who is narrating. I'm gonna give it a two star because like it was good but it like wasn't very memorable. I give out a lot of three stars because that's like when I don't really know like how I feel about it but I'm pretty sure I know that this book wasn't super special to me so that's why it's getting a two. From there I moved on to another audiobook called something about a crash like they will crash. It's a horror story about this people who like um were in a plane crashed on an island and it's like a remote thing except this is from a series that's called like creature encounters and the synopsis kind of hints that there's like something else going on it's not just like a lord of the flies situation like there's a monster or a creature that's gonna start preying on everyone and i was like i'm in the mood for some like monster horror so that's what i read today i read another 150 pages i think i might have read actually over 150 pages today but i don't know exactly how much so um i will check back with you tomorrow for friday i'm very excited for the work week to be over bye what you putting in there? Blueberry kombucha. Not just the color. It does have the color. Is it gonna turn purple because of the beets? Oh, 100%. That's blueberry beet smoothie.
Hi friends, it's Saturday. I just got back from the bookstore. My mom took me out as like a birthday present. If you guys have a loved one and it's your birthday and they want to get you a birthday present, um, the best freaking birthday present, especially if you're a quality time person, is get them to take you to a bookstore and walk with them, chat with them, have a coffee, and if they want to, they can buy you a book. Anyway, so I just got back from doing that and I am now settling in to do some chores. I haven't read hardly anything, maybe like 10 pages today, and I need to get moving on that. So I'm gonna do some chores around the house and get to reading. So I'm about to get changed into something more comfy for reading, but I just wanted to show you my outfit really quick. I went to the bookstore like this and I just think it's super cute. I was really channeling Stranger Things. I feel like this is something Max Mayfield would wear, like the little striped shirt. These mom jeans, which I got for $6. They're Lee jeans and they're super high-waisted and they're like really like, they just fit really nicely. And then obviously the Vans, so yeah. Hi friends, it's a bit later in the evening. Um, it's going on six o'clock and we've just had a very, slow day, slow afternoon. I wanted to give you an update though on my reading. I don't know how I'm gonna get to 150 today. I'm on page 164 of Echoes and Empires and I was on page 70 or so, so I'm just shy of 100 pages. The reason why I'm a little, I might not get it done today is because we are going to a friend's house tonight for a birthday party that starts at like 7.30 and it's going on six. So. I've got dinner on, we're doing chicken, rice and veg, and just something very simple. But I did want to tell you about Echoes and Umpires. The dust jacket is in the other room, so you'll just have to bear with me. But this is a YA fantasy novel about a girl named Joss. And Joss is in a society <laughs> that does not um, allow magic. It is um, illegal. While at an exhibition, Joss runs into a guy who accidentally spills some magic that he was trying to steal on her and the two of them have to go off on an adventure. Basically, she needs the magic out of her and the guy, Jericho, wants the magic out of her because he is contracted to steal it and Binks is gonna come say hi. So that's the essence of what we've got going on right now. So far, they have encountered many obstacles already. Jericho is like very clearly a super dark character and I feel like there's gonna be a romance. It's a YA fantasy and I'm pretty sure there's romance in here. So it's good. It's really not that like amazing. The writing in it and like the dialogue between the two characters is like not very nuanced. They say exactly what they're thinking. I prefer writing that's a little bit more like atmospheric. This isn't super descriptive. Like it doesn't like tell you a lot about their surroundings. So it's hard to picture these people in the actual setting. And then just their dialogue, I feel is very direct. It's very straightforward. There's not a lot of things that are unsaid, which especially when crafting a romance specifically, but in general, crafting any character relationships, I find that I get more invested when there are things that are unspoken. I'm not really getting that from this book so far, but I still have hope. I would say right now it's about a two star read for me. Um, so I do hope that the stakes become higher and that the characters will mature a little bit. Friends, it is Monday morning, and that means today is the last day of reading 150 pages a day. I haven't caught up with you over the weekend, and let me tell you what happened. On Friday, I finished It Came With The Crash. I finished that audiobook. I've yet to total the pages that I technically read on Friday, but I went into reading on Saturday like fresh, like I have to read 150 pages. I didn't like total how many I was carrying over, and I read 110 pages on Saturday. Now, because of that, I went and did, I tried to read 190 pages yesterday on Sunday. Didn't work out for me at all. On Saturday, I was reading Echoes and Empires and I got to page 180, I got to chapter 11, and then I read to page 308, so not quite 130 pages, 
but I had to take 40 of those 130-ish pages and put it back onto Saturday, which means I have a lot of reading to do today. I'm going into my work day and I am going to pick an audiobook because that's the only way I will come close to fe finishing. However, I am going to do some math and figure out how many of my pages from Friday and listening to that whole audiobook basically in two days, um, how much that will help me out for today as well. So I have a plan. I did it. Happy Monday night, friends. I read 150 pages today and I made up for my slacking over the weekend. I have actually totaled 1,104 pages for this whole week. I've washed my hair, I'm getting ready for bed, and some things about today. The audiobook that I started was Clockwork Princess. If you did not know, I am going through the Infernal Device trilogy and started this audiobook today on my way into work. I actually did a lot of listening. This is a 16-hour audiobook and I made it about a quarter of the way through, meaning I read or listened to about four and a half hours today of this audiobook, which is pretty impressive for me, and I'm very pleased with that. It's going great. Most notably though is, I haven't really touched base with you about the River of Silver, basically at all. I did a good job at the beginning of the week of basically reading one of these short stories a day, but I haven't read one on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, and I just picked this back up again and I read another and I cried. The story was about two characters who had a very ambiguous ending in the original trilogy and seeing what actually happened to them was just very emotional for me for some reason. I only have two more short stories to read in this collection and I'm not ready for it to be over. It wrecks me every time I pick it up and I just love this so much. All right, friends, welcome to the end of this vlog, of this challenge. In summary, I read a lot of things. I didn't even talk to you about QBQ, but I read some of this on Friday. It's a book that I'm going through for work, and I did total those pages in the 1,104, whatever I mentioned earlier. During the week, I completed one physical read, and I also completed two audiobooks. It came with The Crash, which I ended up giving three stars. I liked it. Was it amazing? Mm. No, not really. And then I gave Cross Her Heart two stars and that was the second audiobook I finished. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you had a good time. Thank you guys so much for 150 subscribers. I very much enjoy making these videos. And if you're not subscribed, I make bookish content. And if you've watched this video, that means you like bookish content and you should subscribe. So other than that, have a great rest of your day and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.